Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast with your host, James Woodham, giving you the best tips on achieving the perfect renovation whilst making it as fun, safe, and as cost-effective as possible by hearing from experts in the industry and people that have been through the experience themselves. Let me introduce your host, three times award winner of leading renovation website, House, and over 15 years in the industry, renovating just over 200 properties, James Woodham. Hello, uh, my name is James. Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast. Um, it's well got underway now. I think we're on our 13th episode. And um, I just wanted to do a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we do the episode today. Um, and the, But the episode is called, um, Why Should I Listen to Kevin McLeod? Now, um, Kevin McLeod is... Um, the presenter of Grand Designs, and Grand Designs uh, not only is an exhibition, um, usually held at the uh, XL in London, but it's also a program on TV, Channel 4, um, where he views uh, homeowners' properties and uh, watches the whole stage process of um, the development of that project. And um, Kevin McLeod actually said that the most important person to hire after the architect is the project manager and today I'm going to be talking to you about why he's absolutely right and why it's so important to consider hiring a project manager for your project but before I do I just want to speak about uh, a couple of things so um Thank you for your reactions in the private group on Facebook. Um, and if you want to join, you can go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the property renovation podcast. Um, I can see it's growing and people are coming in, which is really great. So thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to be trying to give all sorts of advice in there. Um, we've got a project manager that's, uh, that's in there um, ready for your questions and some designers in there as well and also uh, other homeowners. So, you know, if you've got a story, if you've got a, um, a question, then put it up within the group and I'm sure there'll be someone there to help you. And if, if it's some advice that you can give another homeowner, then that's great too. Um, also, thank you very much for the reviews on um, iTunes and Stitcher. Um, it's fantastic to see that we are doing a good job and um, the more reviews, the better. Um, we can only get better by understanding and listening and what and reading your reviews. So please, if you haven't left the review already, um, tell us what you think of the podcast um, and uh, give us a, a suggestion as well. If you want to hear something on the podcast, then let us know. Um, I just want to quickly tell you uh, what I've been up to. Last weekend, I actually uh, interviewed a bespoke kitchen supplier and that was a great episode, actually. That's going to be going live on, on the podcast very soon. And I also um, interviewed a building company. Um, they were in North London. I went to a live project. And uh, it was it was such a relief to see, uh, well, a breath, breath of fresh air, actually, to see a building company really consider um, all of the preparation that has to happen within a project before the finished um, item or the products go in. Uh, you know, everything that happens behind the scenes, behind the walls, underneath the floor, all of those kind of things. It was really, really nice to see the amount of, the level of detail um, that they 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 they, they did and, and what they had to consider. And it was a clean site as well. Health and safety was very good. So, you know, it was, it was a breath of fresh air to actually see that. And that's that. Um, I interviewed uh, Ricardo um, and he's going to be uh, coming on the podcast very soon. So that's going to be another episode uh, coming up. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please subscribe to the podcast. Um, if you subscribe, the more people subscribe, the more we're going to go up in the charts and then the more homeowners we're going to help. So please subscribe. OK, um, let's get straight to the episode. Um Within a project, there are four key things that you need to think about, a minimum of four, and they are time, communication, money, and quality. So you need to be thinking about those four things 
when you're considering a building company and uh, for your project and when you're considering your project as a whole anyway. Um, I'm just going to talk about the processes that you go through uh, for, for any renovation. So you've got the visit, the quote, the acceptance of that quote, uh, the start date, and then you've got things that happen during the works, and then you've got after the work as well. But I'm speaking about visit, uh, the visit, the quote, the acceptance, the start date, and during the works today. So first of all, the visit. You need to be thinking, if you're not gonna hire a project manager, who's gonna ask the right questions to the building company? It's all well and good saying, I want this there, I want that there, and you know this is what I want, get on with it. Um, whereas a project manager is gonna ask all of the right questions. They're gonna ask if it's feasible, uh, they're gonna ask uh, what would you, how would you consider doing it this way or that way, um, and they're going to ask all sorts of technical questions as well to really understand how that's going to work or, you know, how that certain thing is going to work. Um, a project manager understands a builder's terminology and a builder's terminology could really be anything from you can't have that toilet there because you need uh, a macerator. Now, if you don't know what a macerator is, you're going to go and do your research, but you, you might not know right then and there. So, you know, it leaves it leaves room for miscommunication, misunderstanding um, and all sorts of things. So whereas a project manager is going to really understand from the beginning and talk to the builder and the builder is going to be a lot more comfortable, I'm sure, if they're any if they're if they're good, um, then they're going to be a lot more comfortable getting their point across to someone that knows the industry. Uh, and then you've got the preparation before the visit. So are you going to be fully prepared for the visit? Whereas a project manager will absolutely be prepared because they're going to do the research on the building company that you're considering. Um, they're going to be doing the research on what you want so that all the questions are there um, uh, being asked on the day. They're going to be asking, they're going to be preparing about um, your property, about the parking and considering the whole situation, about access to the property, all of these kind of things, um, whereas a homeowner might not necessarily consider certain things. So, and this all really does have um, involvement in the quotation because every building company considers whether they can have a skip um, to put all the rubbish in or whether they have to have mobile skips which cost more money then they're going to be thinking about the parking they're going to be thinking about the access they're going to be thinking about um, the storage spaces for all of their tools and stuff like that and where they can cut certain things because you know you might have a really nice garden and you don't want um, all dust going everywhere and stuff like that so they'll be considering many, 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 many things, um, whereas a homeowner might not necessarily be considering those things. Then let's talk about the quotation. So with the quotation, um, let's just say you've got three quotes. How detailed are they? Uh, does it just say bathroom fitting £4,000 and that's it? Or does it say, uh, you know, bathroom rip out, um, installation of first fix, second fix, all of those kind of things, lighting, uh, tiling, all of this in stages. So you need to be thinking about how detailed that quotation is um, and how itemized it is as well. Um, then also like the raw materials that's going to be uh, used to do your project. Um, they should be mentioned on the quotation um, because... With raw materials, let's just talk about the budget as a whole. If you've got a very tight budget, a building company is going to look at the fact that you've got a very tight budget. So they're going to be doing their very, very best to see whether they're going to get accepted by offering a quote that is within your budget. That's probably, you know, that's what will happen. So you need to be considering the, the raw materials that they're going to be purchasing. So you've got 
two different types of plaster. You've got two different types of, well, you've got many different types of adhesive. You've got many different types of um, uh, pipe work that you can have. You can have plastic pipe work. You can have copper pipe work. You know, all of these kind of things. And they cost differently. One's really, really cheap. And then the other, the others are a little bit more. So, you know, to get within, to, 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 to achieve the project, the building company is going to be considering all sorts of things and also where they can um, go cheaper on certain things. And that's really the, the, the sometimes it, sometimes that can be the worrying thing. So you really need to, understand what those raw materials are and a project manager will absolutely ask what materials are going to be used to do the 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 project so that you know and these materials the raw materials are the materials that you're not going to see once the project's finished these are the materials that are hidden under the floor are hidden behind the walls are hidden in the ceiling you know you ain't going to see these so you really don't know what the quality is like so it's best to have a project manager that asks those kind of questions. Then you need to be thinking about a method statement. You need to be thinking about uh, how that quote came over and is there a method statement to it? How, and the method statement should clearly state how, what procedure and how the building company is going to achieve the installation. Really clearly sit, set down. A paragraph per room if 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 you like just to make it easy they really need to un they really need to clearly make that so you need to be asking for a method statement a project manager is going to be asking for a method statement um and then you've got to think about the quotation let's just say the quotation comes on its own maybe it comes with this method statement maybe maybe it doesn't maybe it's itemized maybe it's not then you need to be thinking about the designs so if you're having a full blown out house renovation, there's going to be lots of things that are going to be moving from the existing position that they are right now. Then you've got to be thinking about the things that you're adding on top as well. So more lighting, more sockets, all of these kind of things. Uh, maybe the wardrobes are going into an entirely different position as to where they are now. All of these kind of things, maybe some new partition walls are being built. So you don't want to be just pointing your finger and saying, I want it there, I want it there, or even just getting down a piece of paper and scribing down exactly what you think. It needs to be done to scale. And a design team are going to be doing those 2D drawings to scale so that the building company can quote accurately on the job. If you haven't got any drawings, then they're going to be quoting based on the information that you've given them and hope for the best um, because maybe you're going to change your mind halfway through the project. And if they had designs and they could work through that, then it's going to be much more simpler to uh, get the project done. There's going to be fewer questions being asked, which means that it's going to be finished faster. So um, always consider the designs because, again, when they're doing the quotation, what are they quoting? What are they based? They're basing the quote on what you've said. That's it and some photos of maybe some inspiration photos that you've given them. But ultimately, they're basing it on the quote of what you've said that you want. So if they've got designs, then it's a lot clearer. Let's talk about the acceptance. You've gone ahead, you've accepted this building company to do the job. Have you accepted it verbally? Have you just given them a call and you've said, yeah, I like the quote, thank you very much, when can you start? Or have has it been contracted? Have they drafted up a contract? Have they sent that to you? Have you had a good read of it? Do you understand every single word it says in it? Do you understand the terms and conditions? Do you understand the cancellation process? These are the things you need to be thinking about. Um, a project manager is going to be looking at all of those things and they're going to be looking at it from um, mostly an impartial point of view in terms of is it fair? Is the contract fair? Are what the uh, payment pr um, stages uh, that uh, the company is asking for fair? Um, is the terms and conditions fair um, for the building company and the homeowner? And is the, can is the cancellation process there? You know, um, what happens if you cancel? Um, or what happens if the 
building company can't do any more work? What happens if the building company is delayed because your materials are not on site? You know, they're going to charge you more money. These kind of things. You need to be thinking about all of these kind of things. Let's talk about the start date. Now, the start date, there's a lot more preparation that needs to go in. You need to be thinking about clearing your property. You need to be thinking about whether you're going to be staying there or not. So you've got to think about accommodation and everything else. You've got to think about what materials need to be purchased before the project starts. And the reason why that's important is because then they're on site. Then they can be checked. They can be checked to see if they're the right model or the wrong model. They can be checked to see whether they're damaged or not. And these things, if they're on site well before the project starts, then there is time to get them returned and the right one uh, or a replacement ordered. Um, then you've got to deal with the purchasing. Are you going to be at work and doing all of these purchases? Are you going to be doing them at 12 o'clock at night when you get home? Are you going to be doing them on a weekend when you could be spending time with your family? So all of these kind of things, whereas a project manager... They're going to be doing the purchases well beforehand. It's going to be staggered so that um, the deliveries happen in line with the project schedule and everything else. Um, and then they're going to be dealing with returns. They're going to be dealing with the fact that they can call up the build. They can call up the supplier and say it's the wrong one you've delivered. Um, I'm going to be on site on Thursday or Friday or whatever, and. Um, I need you to deliver it then for the building company. So they can, you know, the project manager is there to, get, to, to give access rather than you breaking up maybe your lunch hour and you're running home to give access to, um, to, to the supplier. Suppliers deliver stuff um, most of the time with a time slot of like eight hours, between nine and five. If you're lucky, some of them deliver in between a three-hour slot. Um, but you don't want to be waiting around for those deliveries when you can just be getting on with your life. So a project manager is going to know, they're going to be liaising with them, and then the project manager will make himself to site or he will contact the building company and say, this um, you know, this product is arriving on site, check it, make sure it's the right model, thank you very much. So as simple as that. Um, and then finally, we need to be just talking about the during the works. During the works, you need to be thinking about the quality that you are receiving. I mean, quality, if I could really shout and scream more about that, the better, um, in big capital letters, quality. Quality matters. Quality matters um, in the raw materials, quality matters in the finishing product, quality matters in the building company and how they are doing the project themselves. Um, so you need to be thinking about the quality overall. And um, a project manager is going to be thinking about quality from from the get go. They're going to be having sign off stages where um, they would physically go to site and then they would sign off each stage of the works to make sure that um, they're happy with receiving that that kind of quality. Um, and then you're going to be given the chance to sign those stages of works to make sure that you are happy with it visually and, um, you know, it, you're happy with it as a whole as well. Um, then during the works, the building company is going to be looking for a lot of instruction. A lot of questions are going to happen. A lot of advice needs to be given. A lot of guidance needs to be there. So with regard, I mean, I'm just going to be giving you one example where you've got an oven and maybe you've ordered this oven and it's 3000 kilowatts or whatever. Um, if you have purchased all, if you've chosen all of your purchase, purchases before the project starts, the project manager is going to go in his office and they're going to download every single technical drawing that comes with those appliances so that then they can be given to the electrician and the plumber so that then they know what materials they need to have before arriving on site. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're paying high, high, a premium for an electrician or a plumber to be on site. They arrive on site to find that they've got the wrong part and then they have to go off again because that's hours lost. So you need to be thinking about um, you know, whether it's worth having the project manager that can download all these technical drawings and make sure that the materials are on site and the raw materials are already there to install it. Um, a lot of miscommunication happens on a project 
And the miscommunication can happen from you just having a verbal conversation with the building company in the morning before you go to work. And then they they may say, yes, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it. But they might not completely understand. Um, they might be telling you, listen, uh, this this can't go there or that can't go there or we have to do it this way. And then you might be saying, yes, 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 but you might not fully understand so then there's an area where you come home from work and you go, I, I didn't say that. I didn't agree to that. And then the work needs to be done again. And then who's going to be paying for that? So you need to be just thinking about um, where a project manager uh, would get involved. They know building terminology. They know how to speak to a building company. A building company knows how to speak to a project manager. And the information is just relayed back to you from the project manager in a way that you would understand. So then there's no miscommunication. Everyone is involved. You've got a lot of extras that can happen on a project as well. So um, I've got a couple of statistics here as well. So 95%, 95% of projects go over budget. 95%. Two out of five projects don't end up with the original builder completing the job um so you know it's not all about what the quote is coming in at it's what the quote what you're paying for at the end because a building company would come in um to replace the building company that you had and they're certainly not going to continue the work without taking things apart and doing them themselves because they won't be able to guarantee the work so it's going to cost you more money so you know 70 percent 70 percent of projects cost as much as the most expensive quote that a homeowner receives. They end up costing just as much as the orig- as the highest quote that you would receive. So, you know, without a project manager, these are the risks. Um, then, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I've, I've, I've interviewed homeowners and spoken to them about their projects and they always say two things. One, that the project come in double, uh, half if not double. And um, they always say that in hindsight, they would have hired a project manager. And you don't want to be saying that. You want to be saving your money from the beginning. Um, I just want to think about, yeah, so with, with during the works, you've got running, uh, I've got here running out of money. Now, the running out of the money is about the building company and yourself. So you could have a budget. It, the project spirals out of control through miscommunication, through not having the right materials on site, through ordering the wrong uh, purchases, um, maybe not having your place ready for the building company. So then they've got to protect more things in your home and stuff like that. There's lots of reasons why you could end up spending more money um and from a building company point of view i I was going to say so from from your point of view you've got that you'll spend more money but you might not have it so the project then has to stop until you get more finance for the project to continue um and a building company is not going to be happy about that they're not going to be happy if they can't uh receive their payments so you need to be thinking about if you can afford them and their extra works that come involved as well. And a building company, when you've done your research on the building company, you need to be thinking, um, are they going to be able to withstand it? Because they might, you know, be not just doing your project, but doing doing another project. They could, they could be a building company that is robbing Peter to pay Paul. So you, you could find yourself in a situation where your project is halfway through and the building company runs out of money. And then there's nothing. They, they, they you know, then you're... You're stuck in your home with a half-finished project that the building company walks off site because he can't afford it or they can't afford it and uh, or the building company walks off site because you can't afford it and you don't want to be in either of those situations. So just to finish up, when you're considering about whether you should have a project manager, there are they are there for a reason and... Um, a project manager hiring a project manager can cost anything between 10 and 12 percent of the project value so you just need to be considering whether that's worth it because it's either that 
or you pay much more, much, much more, um, thousands and thousands of pounds more you could end up paying. You could end up going as far as going to court with a building company, you know, because um, of you not being able to afford it or they not being able to um, carry out the work. Um, or, or, or other reasons in communica- miscommunication as well, you could, you could end up going to court. So you need to be thinking of um, just weighing up the risk, really. Sometimes maybe you, you think, well, do you really need a project manager? But um, if you're doing a large renovation, if you're doing a renovation of more than two, prop- two rooms in your home, um, either the kitchen and the bathroom, um, or the you know the kitchen and the living room, for instance, you really should think about it. So, um, without further ado, that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'm going to be getting some show notes put together, and uh, we can put that um, on the blog. Um, and you can go to our blog. It's full of loads of advice. Uh, you can go to blog.com uh, uh, blog dot akiva projects blog dot akiva projects dot com you can go to that and um check out uh all of the advice that's on there um and i hope you enjoyed that thank you very much see you on the next episode <laughs>